apologize. See, now apologize. you're explaining the joke, and there's nothing less funny than explaining a joke. That This is where I'm going. There's nothing that kills a joke more than explaining a joke. That's like the guy on YouTube that takes our Nerd Crew videos and, and intercuts it with, like, actual, uh... Right, uh, right. Like, like, podcaster stuff, where it's yep. like, you're just explaining the joke. Sponsored by Disney. Bill Lord and Christopher Miller exited the movie over creative differences, with both Lucasfilm and <laughs> Lord and Miller releasing statements about the split. There's a lot of unboxing that goes with this story. <laughs> Star Wars fans, there's a lot of emotional unpacking that we need to do. <laughs> First of all, just on a scale of one to ten, how surprised or shocked were you by this news? Sc surprised? Ten. Worried? Two. Okay. There's been reported problems on all of them or reported concerns. But guess what? That's filmmaking. But I'm not worried because I take it as a good thing. I'd, I'd rather have them correct it like they maybe it did with Rogue One. We're like, hey, there's some things we need fixing. Let's bring in Gilroy. Let's reshoot some of these things and get it right in our eyes. What you read in the Variety Report is they go as, as far as to say, like, Kathleen Kennedy didn't like the way they folded their socks. That's an actual quote from the... So then just like safe, which is what probably Kasdan and Kathleen Kennedy and Disney wants to do, and there's nothing wrong with that. They're doing the Rogue One kicked ass, Force Awakens kicked ass. They've got the formula that works. So Ron Howard or not, I'm okay with this kind of safe pick. This is not the first time it happened. Hopefully this is the shining example of how you can have a replacement come in, knock it out of the park, and we can all live to see another day at another Star Wars standalone movie. going with somebody who you feel is a steady hand who can write this ship. Got to want to bring in someone to write the ship. We can steer the ship back home to port. We steer this ship. So he will be able to take the, the ship there. But And let's write the ship. He'll drive that extra mile, bring the car in safely mm -hmm. into the port and not have any wheels fall off or any car accidents happen on the way. And uh, I, I'm not worried, Mark. I'm not worried. You know why I'm not worried? What site do you trust? What story do you trust? I heard some other stuff this weekend from people who knew someone who knew someone. I, I, I'm not going to say them because they're pointless because we don't know. We weren't there. But I'm not worried, Mark. It's the same way I did the last Jedi trailer. See if there's any kind of hidden nuggets in there and hidden gems. I don't know if there is. I have no idea. Uh, as we always do, we'll come through some theories maybe, some speculation. Um, but here we go. This is, this is nothing big. This They flip some stuff on. There you go. Those huts that it seems to be on the planet Luke's and Hat. There's the Millennium Falcon. They're building up the Falcon. A lot of emphasis on the Falcon. Yep. Chewie doing his hair. A lot of rollers in there. Um, now that is a cool little shot. What is that? Those are the, some ships and some people kind of getting ready for it. This shot's pretty cool. This shot here is pretty cool, though. This shot's cool. This is a shot of, um. that's a cool little shot. Someone's swimming. Someone's just taking a nice swim. This was a cool shot here. You got this uh, big llama-looking freak-ass thing, whatever the hell that is. Um, it seems like she's kind of going to be going to fight somebody. And there's, Who's falling down there? Is that seems to be just a dude. Maybe he blows up. I don't know. But I was reading the THR report, and there's certain phrases that just bother me. They, they present it as, Howard is considered to be a safe choice. I get it. That doesn't sound like much fun. Pull that rubbish away! I just want to point out that there's a lot of stories, a lot of quotes going around right now. Everybody has a source. We trust sources. Sometimes we don't. But really, given how this conversation has progressed over the past couple of days, don't take any of these quotes to heart too much because really the truth of the matter is nobody really knows every little, little detail about what went on behind closed doors. I do somewhat doubt that so many sources could have been in the know to the degree that we could get really concrete quotes where we can fully understand exactly what happened here. There really is a lot to unpack here. <laughs> None of you guys sitting out there behind your computers have a franchise on your shoulders. So you don't know what it's like. You don't know the machinations, the board, all these executives you got to answer to. You don't know what it's like to be in this position. So, you know, do keep in mind, don't take any of these quotes to heart too much. You know, it's a very fluid process. There's a lot of people, a lot of very talented people in play. And we just got to trust in the people in charge. I mean, I most certainly do. So I still have very high hopes for the film. All right, so we know that Kylo Ren's going to be a, a lot more on the dark side since, um, you know, obviously killing his father. So here we go. This is interesting. Though. Who are these two people fighting him? And it looks like they're fighting him with sabers. We don't know yet. We haven't seen the final visual effects, but they're going after him. Who else has sabers? Does, does Luke have 
you know, other students out there? Are there other Jedi or, or Padawans learning the Force? Or was this, is this a flashback? Is this when Kylo Ren perhaps went to the dark side of the uh, of the Force or were first turned against Luke? Is it a flashback scene where we see him fighting other Jedi that he eventually destroys? Or they're bringing people where these people don't even have swords? Or maybe it's the Knights of Ren that he's going up against. Um, I don't know, maybe he turns against Snoke at one point and, and these these particular um, protectors of Snoke are going after him. Who the hell knows? But we just know that he's either going to be going up against two people that potentially have sabers, or maybe they're just, you know, maybe they don't have sabers at all. Maybe he's infiltrating a certain place and they're trying to attack him with these other kind of batons the same way that the, the other stormtroopers did. So there you go. That's the breakdown of this thing and there's really not much there.